Shalom. Today we're going to look at another pair of letters in the Hebrew alphabet. I'll put a link for the font chart below if you don't already have one. The two letters we're looking at today are Chet Lamed. And we're going to find that most of the words that come from this pair have something to do with a hole. So it's interesting, it's an English cognate, hole, chol, we'll see how it's all related. The most basic meaning for chol, as a word by itself, is profane or common, Leviticus 10.10, 10, and that you may put difference between holy and unholy, between unclean and clean. 1 Samuel 21.24, And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under mine hand, but there is hallowed bread, if the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And we have an expression which is chol hamoed. These are the ordinary days between the high days of Passover and the high days of Sukkot. So at Passover time, we have a Passover Seder. We have an assembly on the first day of Matzah. And then we have an assembly on the seventh day. And in between, those days are called chol hamoed. They're the ordinary days of the appointed times. Same thing on Sukkot. Now this is a picture of an ancient Egyptian man. It looks maybe like he's starting a fire, but he's not. He's drilling a hole. And so a lot of the meanings that we're going to get from this idea of the hole, of the empty space, of the thing that is pierced or punctured come from this process. You can see that there's a rope which is used to keep the pieces together as the bow is going back and forth, and there's a drill bit at the bottom. It's drilling the hole. So another basic word is chol, which means sand. And this is related to the drilling process in that sand is used as a sort of lubricant for the process. Genesis 22:17 that in blessing I will bless you, and in multiplying I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Hosea 1.10 Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, You are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, You are the sons of the living God. Now there is a verb, chul, which means to dance or to writhe in fear. And this comes from the, the bowstring, which is going back and forth. The string is constantly in movement, in a kind of a writhing motion. Judges twenty one twenty one, And see, and behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance and dances, then come you out of the vineyards and catch you every man his wife of the daughters of Shiloh and go to the land of Benjamin. First Samuel 31.3 And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was sore wounded of the archers. So here we begin to see the concept of being pierced. Job 15.20 the wicked man travails with pain all his days, and the number of years is hidden to the oppressor. This idea of writhing. Psalm 29, 8-9. through 9. The voice of Jehovah shakes the wilderness. Jehovah shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of Jehovah makes the hinds to calve and discovers the forests, and in his temple does everyone speak of his glory. Very specifically in terms of writhing and cords, this verb will relate to giving birth. Psalm 114.7 Tremble, you earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. Isaiah 51.2 Look unto Abraham your father, and Sarah that bore you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. Now there are a few other nouns, which come from the same root, which mean damn. And as I talked about elsewhere, the mem in the front can just be a noun prefix. So we have the word machol, Psalm 30, 11. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Lamentations 5, 15. The joy of our heart is ceased. Our dance is turned into mourning.
also Mechola, Exodus 15.20. And Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. Exodus 32.19. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moses' anger waxed hot, and he cast the tables out of his hand and broke them beneath the mouth. So far we have this concept of drilling a hole and also the string that's going back and forth making a kind of a writhing or dancing movement. Also the bearing of children. Here's another related root, chil, means pain or sorrow. Exodus 15.14 The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of Palestina. Jeremiah 6.24 we have heard the fame thereof, our hands wax feeble. Anguish has taken hold of us as pain as of a woman in travail, giving birth. A geminate verb, the last two letters are the same, halal, which means to begin or to pierce or profane. So when you have something that's whole, now isn't that funny, something that's whole complete, W-H-O-L-E, and you put a hole in it, H-O-L-E, then it becomes unholy, U-N-H-O-L-Y. English, what a language. Psalm 109.22, For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. Something has made a hole in it. Isaiah 53.5, I, I took the NIV because of the translation. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. The idea of having a hole in something. Exodus twenty twenty five, And if you will make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it of hewn stone. For if you lift up your tool upon it, you have polluted it, you have profaned it, you have taken the holiness out of it by putting a hole in it. Ezekiel twenty twenty four, Because they had not executed my judgments, but had despised my statutes, and had polluted my Sabbaths, and their eyes were after their father's idols. We also get this concept of beginning something, because if you're going to make something, a lot of times you have to make a hole in it to start what you're doing. Genesis 4.26 And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enosh. Then began men to call upon the name of Jehovah. And the verb is halal, and it means to begin. Joshua 3, 7. And Yehovah said unto Joshua, This day I will begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that, as I was with Moses, and so I will be with you. The idea of begin does not necessarily have a negative meaning behind it. Of course, if you get a hole in you, you might die. Numbers 19, 16. And whosoever touches one that is slain with a sword in open fields, or a dead body, or a bone of a man, or a grave, shall be unclean seven days. Psalm sixty nine twenty six, Where they persecute him whom you have spitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom you have wounded. Something which definitely has to have a hole in it is a flute. You need a hole for the air to run through that, that vibrates to make the noise. Khalil. Isaiah 5, 12. And the harp, and the viol, the tabret, and pipe, and wine are in their feasts, but they regard not the work of Jehovah, neither consider the operation of his hands. 1 Kings 1, 40. And all the people came up after him, and the people piped with pipes, and rejoiced with great joy, so that the earth rent with the sound of them. Now here is a word which you will still hear often in Israel, in modern Hebrew, chalila. When I was there originally, the phrase was chas v'chalila, and people will still recognize that, but now I think they tend to say chas v'shalom. But it means, God forbid, don't make a hole in it. Don't ruin it. Genesis 18:25, That be far from you, chalila, to do after this manner, to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked, that be far from you, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Genesis forty four seventeen, And he said, Chalila, God forbid that I should do so. But the man in whose hand the cup is found, 
he shall be my servant. And as for you, get you up in peace unto your father. Another root, which is related to this idea of having a hole, of being pierced, of not being whole complete, is chala, which means sickness. Genesis 48.1 And it came to pass after these things that one told Joseph, Behold, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Menashe and Ephraim. Judges 16.11 And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new ropes that never were occupied, then I shall be weak and be as another man. Samson lying to Delilah. 1 Kings 15.23 the rest of all the acts of Asa, and all his might, and all that he did, and the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Judah? Nevertheless, in the time of his old age, he was diseased in his feet. 1 Kings 22.34 And a certain man drew a bow at a venture, and smote the king of Israel between the joints of his harness. Wherefore he said unto the driver of his chariot, Turn thine hand, and carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. You just see a lot of overlap and meanings between all the different three-letter root containing these two letters, Chet and Lamed. Another related root for the sickness is Tachaluim, Tachaluim, sicknesses. Deuteronomy 29:22. So that the generation to come of your children that shall rise up after you and the stranger that shall come from a far land shall say, when they see the plagues of that land and the sicknesses, which Jehovah has laid upon it, Psalm 103.3, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. So many times we see that people's sin is forgiven before they're healed. There's some relationship there, right? Another root is yachal, which means to hope or wait. Genesis 8.12, and he stayed yet another seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. First Samuel 13, 8. And he tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. Job thirteen fifteen, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. I'm not really sure how this root is related to the idea of a hole or piercing. If you have any ideas, please let me know. And possibly related to the idea of waiting or trusting, we have this root, chala, chala, also used to mean patting or smoothing. Job 11.19 You would also lie down and no one would make you afraid. Yes, many would court your favor. Literally, many would smooth your face. Just kind of imagine that patting, that smoothing. Just calm down. And uh, let me let me ask my favor from you. First Kings thirteen six, and the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of Jehovah your God and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought Jehovah, and the king's hand was restored again and became as it was before. Another root which you may possibly know is challah. That is the name of bread that some people take for Arab Shabbat on Friday evening. Exodus 29, 2. And unleavened bread, and cakes unleavened tempered with oil, and wafers unleavened anointed with oil, of wheat and flour shall you make them. Leviticus 24, 5. And you shall take fine flour and bake twelve cakes thereof. Two tenth deals shall be in one cake. So we are used to our challah, looking like the picture on the left, but probably it looked more like the picture on the right, a, a bread, even if it had yeast in it, but smacked up against the side of an oven and probably perforated to help the air go through, to help it cook quickly. And finally, we have one more hole, the hole in the wall, Genesis 8, 6. And it came to pass at the end of the 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he made, the chalon. Joshua 2.21, And she said, According to your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed, and she bound the scarlet line in the window. Until next time, Tosimita Enayim al Hashemayim, keep your eyes on the sky, your redemption draweth nigh. And here's a little song 
about a chalil, about a flute. David Melech Yisrael, Thank you.